Good morning. Thank you for joining us together here at South Street Baptist Church, Greenwich, London. My name is Alice, and on behalf of Pastor Gideon, Pastor Irene, we welcome you to our service today. We also welcome those of you watching online. Today, Grandma Simiu will share the word of God with us. Grandma's an executive leader here at South Street Baptist Church, and he's going to be speaking on the faithfulness of God. Amen. So whether you're in church today or you're watching us online, I want to encourage you, you've made a good decision, a good decision to come and worship God today, to listen to his living word. My prayer this morning is that you experience the power and the presence of God in your current reality, that you know the love and faithfulness of God today. God is for you. Lamentation reminds us, through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed. Because his compassions fail not, they are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I hope in him. We live in uncertain times, but we have a, a faithful God in whom we can put our trust. I'm going to read some verses from Isaiah chapter 9, verses 1 to 7. It's just 12 days to Christmas, and this is one of the prophecies about our God coming down on earth as man, about who Jesus is and what he does. So Isaiah 9, verse 1 to 7, please. Nevertheless, the gloom will not be upon her who is distressed, when, whereas when at first he lightly esteemed the land of Zebulun and the land of Nephtali, and afterwards more heavily oppressed her, by the way of the sea beyond the Jordan in Galilee of the Gentiles. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in the land of the shadow of death, upon them a light has shined. You have multiplied the nation and increased its joy, and they rejoice before you according to the joy of harvest, as men rejoice when they divide the spoil. For you have broken the yoke of his burden, and the staff of his shoulder, and the rod of his oppressor, as at the day of Midian. For every warrior's sandal from the noisy battle and the garments rolled in blood will be used for burning and fuel of fire. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom, to, to order and establish it with judgment and justice, from that time forward, forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Amen. Amen. So verse 2 says, just the people, still your mind and heart, as I just read a couple of these verses again. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in the land of the shadow of death, upon them a light has shined. And verse 6 again. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Hallelujah. This is our God. The child born, the son given, the great light seen by those walking in darkness is the Lord Jesus Christ. This is our God, the one we've come to worship today, the one we turn to, we turn to. So may his light shine in any darkness you're experiencing today. No, he is wonderful. He is counsellor, everlasting father. He is prince of peace. He is on the throne and of his government and peace there will be no end. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're very quiet with me today. Start, let's start engaging. God is here, yeah? God is here. We come before him. Hallelujah. We're going to move into a time of prayer. Let's stand. Stand if you're able to. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Most High God, God, of your compassion and mercy. It's new this morning. It's new this morning. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you for your power and presence here. We declare yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory. We declare yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, God. Holy, holy, holy is the most Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Worthy of all praise and glory this morning. Bless God. Bless God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's worship our God. Amen. Amen. Let's worship our God.
presence where you are on it. We honor you today. We honor you today. sharing the word of God with us today Amen. and before that why factor you're leaving for your service so our 10 to 14 year olds um, our first steps and quest children you're staying in with your families and with the adult who brought you today and um, God bless you and um, pray for you um, as you as you join us today as well in the week um, one of the emails Grandma wrote this, he wrote, there's more to come when we dare to believe in our supernatural God. So, I'm going to say that again because everybody just shouted, so they're not listening to me. There's more to come when we dare to believe in our supernatural God. Amen. Amen. Okay. Well, please remember to take notes and um, have something to take notes with and put into action what you learn. from verse 8 onwards where what, what um, John saw in his vision and he says holy, holy, holy is the Lord God the mighty, the almighty God the omnipotent God who was and is and is to come and whenever the living creatures that were before the Lord were glorifying whenever the creatures give glory and honor and thanksgiving to him who sits on the throne to him who lives forever and ever the 24 elders who are sitting who are there before him they fell down before him who sits on the throne and they worshiped him who lives forever and ever and they and they threw down their crowns before the throne and they were saying this Worthy are you, our Lord and God, to receive all glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and because of you, with your will, they exist and were created and brought into being. Hallelujah. So this morning, as we are worshiping God, we are not just doing a random act. We are doing something that is already happening in heaven and will forever be happening in heaven as we get there. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm excited this morning because I have this privilege to speak before you. Pastor Gideon and Pastor Irene have given me this opportunity to share the word of God. And I don't take it for granted whenever I have this opportunity because God, God is at work. Hallelujah. Today I just want us to go back to what's been happening the last few months. If you are here last year, a time like now, and for some reason you disappeared, 
and you came back this year, you would be shocked at what you see. If you went to sleep for a year and came back today, you'd be wondering what happened. There is something here called coronavirus that you didn't know about. And what has happened is we have 71 million infections today, and 20 of them, 20 million of them are still active as we speak today. There's been 1.6 million deaths from coronavirus, and as I watched the figures when I was looking at the statistics, it was ticking so fast by the second, I just could not track it. So deaths are happening so fast. And in the UK, there's been about 63,000 deaths. That is the highest in the whole of Europe. Just so you know, 63,000 deaths. 424 people died on Friday. I don't have the statistics for yesterday, but 424 people died on Friday in our country. And indeed, there are 21,672,000 deaths infections as of Friday. Now those are the statistics you hear in the real world, the world that you and I live in, so that is our natural world. And they say that the symptoms of the coronavirus are the high temperature, you've heard this on radio, I believe all of you would know by now, but if someone has just come into the world after a year, they wouldn't know this, so I'm telling them. You will have high temperature and there will be a new continuous cough, or a loss or change of sense of smell or taste. I remember when coronavirus first came into this country, many of us lost their sense of taste. And I was going around asking friends, can you taste your food? And they're like, no, I cannot taste my food. Neither can I. So we lost our sense of taste for many months, I would say. And many doctors and researchers have looked at the, what is happening and many people cannot tell what exactly is going on, what specifically is the key thing that links all these people together. The one thing they say is there's a deficiency of vitamin D in most of the, it's the most common factor. And again, people have misconceived the way that the virus works. They've, they've believed that If you are healthy and fit, you can assume that you will definitely survive the virus. Many of us know that that is not true today. I know of people who are very healthy, extremely active physically. They were well, but today they are on wheelchairs and they've been on wheelchairs for months. They are uh, athletes who, who are very active in our nation, but they are today on wheelchairs. Why? Because nobody knows how this virus is working. And it says, to help stop the virus from spreading, avoid close contact with anyone you do not live with and wash your hands regularly. Now, we were so used to hugging each other here. We were so used to a life of being a close-knit family. Now, you can see what this virus does. The best way to avoid catching the virus is to keep to yourself. Now, you can see where this is heading to. We are not a community of keeping to ourselves, but here we are, in this place where we are keeping to ourselves. Now, when you see this grim picture, it is very easy for us to get lost in our small world and feel aggrieved and feel the injustice and fear what is going to happen next, because you do not know what's going to happen. Now, here are some other statistics I'll give you. Putting this into perspective, because if we don't, we fail to see the active cases. There's active cases of all of those 99% have very mild conditions. And of, of the closed cases, the cases that are finished, 97 of, 97% of those people actually recovered. So it's not completely all doom and gloom, but we are here in a natural world where 424 people died on Friday, and that cannot be right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want us to get involved because this is going to be very interesting. Hallelujah. Because God is at work in the supernatural, and we cannot assume that what we see in the natural is everything that there is today. And it's not just like God is working in the supernatural and things are just happening up there. No, he's making those things happen on our earth and we have seen them happening in this place. Hallelujah. 
He has promised that he will protect us and that no one of us would die of this disease. So this is a promise from God that we cannot neglect, we cannot ignore that promise from God. Hallelujah. This scripture that we've been reading over and over again, I want it to be in our hearts when we wake up in the night, when we are walking in the day, we need to remember this word of God. It says, do not fear anything, for I am with you. Do not be afraid, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Be assured that I will help you. I will certainly take hold of you with my righteous right hand, a hand of justice, of power, of victory, and of salvation. This is the promise from our God. So if you do not believe this promise from our God, what promise are you living on today? Because you have heard the statistics, and nobody knows Two cases at the same time, one dies, one lives in the same home, people living the same lifestyle. How do you explain that? We do not know what is going on in the, in, in, in the, in the world of this disease, but we know that our God is working. If you believe in this God, you know that he's at work. So no matter how careful you, you have been, how much you have self-isolated, how much you have quarantined, and all the times that we have come to know today that you have kept to yourself, I know that God has been faithful to the people of South Street Baptist Church, and that is my testimony, and that should be your testimony that God has been faithful. Hallelujah. Amen. We are here worshiping God today because He has made it possible for us to gather here today and worship Him. It is not by our own making. I do not believe anyone telling you that you have done it yourself because God has been at work in your life. Hallelujah. Amen. I remember when churches shut a few months ago. Now it's almost a year. But when churches shut down, many of them never returned to, to back to church. People never came back to church to worship again. Many of them are still quarantined. Many of them are still in their homes, unable to get out to go to church. And indeed, some of them lost their lives in the whole process. There is a spiritual battle going on, and the enemy is leading people far away from God. And unless we wake up to this reality, we'll also fall asleep and forget to pray for them and to commit them before the Lord. Hallelujah. The disease has brought so much fear, and I think that has been the key thing. Fear in people's lives, and that's why Isaiah 41, 10 hits the nail on the head. That is about fear. Get rid of that fear by trusting in the Lord. Hallelujah. It is important that we acknowledge that today we stand here because Yahweh, because of Yahweh and not because of how careful we have been. Indeed, we have to be careful, we have to, to, to wash our hands and cover our faces and all, all, the, all the precautions we need to take, but you need to remember that we are here only because God has made it, made it possible. So today I just want to remind you, we cannot live our lives as if nothing has happened. As if we have come from the beginning of the year up to until now and we have lived in our own power. No, sir, no, madam, God has been at work and I know he has been at work in this church. Hallelujah. Amen. And the amazing thing is this. Not only has God kept us and sustained us, God has been blessing people in this church. He's been blessing people in ways that we have never, ever seen in this place before. So how can it be that it's only our own doing? It is God at work in our church, and we need to wake up and acknowledge that our God is faithful. Hallelujah. Amen. This calls for a great shout for our God. Do not be silent. Let us glorify our God because he has been at work. Today, if you take anything home, just remember these few words that I give you today. We cannot live as if nothing has happened, has not has happened in our life, and that God has been faithful to us. It's not been business as usual in the world, and it cannot be business as usual in the lives of the Christians who live and walk on this earth today. 
We need to raise our voices and glorify our God and declare His greatness day and night. When you wake up, when you go to sleep, declare His greatness. Wake your children up. Let them glorify our God. Do not let your children go to sleep forgetting that God has been faithful to us. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Why should we care about what, has, what God has done? I'll read Luke Chapter 17, verses 11 to 19. I think it's coming up. Yes, I'll use NIV. Now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. And as he was going into the village, ten men who had leprosy met him. And they stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he just said, Go, show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw he was healed, he came back praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself before Jesus at the, at the feet of Jesus and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Verse 17, he says this, Jesus asked, were there not? Were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Ten of them went, they received their healing, but one of them, only one of them returned to glorify God. I'll use some other versions because some of the words that they use really depict this picture for me clearly and I hope they depict this picture for you too as well. It was not unusual for these lepers to walk together as they were doing, verse 11 to 14. If you go back for me, Moses, to verse 11. It was not unusual for these lepers to walk together because obviously they had become outcasts in their society and they had no company except amongst themselves. And you can see, as a result, Jews and Samaritans were mixing because they, are, they have something in common here. They have something in common because of leprosy. This disease has brought them together. And it's remarkable that Jesus only asked them to go and show themselves to the priests. And the word says, this, as it was, they went and they were healed as they were going. You can see it was a step of faith. You can see they called him master. Obviously, they had something that they believed about this man. They knew that he had power. And so, as they believed his word, they walked off. And the condition, obviously, was obedience. They had to obey what Jesus was saying. Otherwise, they would not receive their healing. So, and as they obeyed, they received their healing. He was their master at this point, and as they obeyed his word, they received their healing. I want to focus on the one person who came back. And just as Jesus blessed their faith of the lepers, and today he's able to bless our faith when we receive and accept his instructions to obedience. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. All of them, all of the ten, religiously followed the instructions and they went to the priests and they showed themselves before the priests. But one of them came back and he gave thanks. He was the unlikely one. He was the Samaritan. And it just reminded me that sometimes we have seen so many miracles in church and we forget to come back to thank God because we are so used to seeing them. The unlikely one is the one who comes and thanks God. Now, now watch what happens after that because he came back to Jesus. When he came to Jesus, he was the loudest. He came before Jesus and he was giving thanks. In fact, the version I have it says, one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back glorifying and praising and honoring God with a loud voice. And he lay face down at Jesus' feet, thanking him over and over and over and over. Because he knew what disease he had and how he had been rejected. And here he was 
Jesus had made him a man again. And so his gratitude was not limited. He was pouring his, out, his heart out to Jesus because he had seen what God had prepared for him. It is a bold declaration. What he was doing was a bold declaration and a statement of God's power and God's work in his life. You can see he had a different attitude. The nine missed out what Jesus had for them. If you read now, if you go further down to verse 19, the word says, there was, Jesus said to him, get up and go on your way. Your faith, that is your personal trust in me and your confidence in God's power has restored you to health. So there is something more that this person received that the nine did not receive. Do you see that? Hallelujah. He received more than the nine received because he came back to give thanks to Jesus. I think what is happening here, Jesus likely meant God's work within the man's heart. The other lepers, yes, they received healing. The body was perfectly fine, but this man's heart was healed at that moment when he came back to Jesus. So you can have a miracle, but you can miss your inner healing that you need to sustain that miracle going forward. So may we be in a place where when we receive our physical healing, we also receive our inner healing because of our gratitude before God. Hallelujah. When we glorify our God, miracles start to happen. There is a reason why we should give we should give thanks to God because of his faithfulness. There is a reason why we should bring our, our testimony and glorify our God for what he has done in our lives. And I'm going to share some of the testimonies you guys have been sharing so that it's not just the word that I'm sharing here, but you reflect on the things that God has been doing and realize that God has been at work in this place. Hallelujah. When we glorify God for our miracle, it reveals the nature and character of Jesus Christ. When we do this, others will also be able to personally experience God for themselves. That is the power of us coming back to God and saying thank you. Now let me start off with the one that came some time back. This is Sharon. She says this, I was made redundant before the global pandemic hit. Before. In the natural, it looked impossible. There was a global pandemic and thousands of people were made redundant. And in my field of work, people were losing jobs. There was little or no job vacancies advertised and I was getting no responses from the jobs I was applying for. Remember, Sharon is a mother. She has to look after her family. But my God is the way maker. By the grace of God, I have a new job Faith produced rest. I never lost faith and I've never felt more at peace. It was as if the job was tailor-made for me. Thank you for everyone who kept me in their prayers. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God worked out for Sharon. God worked out for Sharon. And as we say, as we glorify God for the miracles he's doing, it reveals his nature. And when we do, others will personally experience the miracles of God. Hallelujah. The word of God says, without faith, it is impossible. It is impossible to please God. It is impossible to please God. So if you want a miracle, you've got to be in a place of believing, as Sharon shared there. Hallelujah. Another praise report from Jessica this time. I have just received a contract for a new freelance job I have an, as, I have as an associate lecturer. It's a job I didn't even apply for. All glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God has been at work in this place. And we need to be loud about what God is doing and glorify his name. The word of God says, your father in heaven knows what you need even before you ask, Jessica. Your father in heaven knows what you need. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now this is another one that God has been working in this lady's life. I glorify God for what he's doing. I just wanted to thank 
everyone for last week's prayers. God answered our prayers and my interview went well, so well that by the afternoon of that day, I had, I had, of the day I had the interview, I was called back and offered that job and that came from Tanya. Glory be to our God. Glory be to our God. The word of God says, call to me and I will answer you and I will tell you great and mighty things. Things which have been, have been confined and hidden from you. Things you did not even know or understand or cannot distinguish. When you believe our God and you walk into that interview, he makes a way. Hallelujah. Amen. That is uh, 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 Tanya's uh, testimony. Another one. This is coming for Sister Fumi. Now listen to this. I thank the Lord for answering my prayer. My flat was without a tenant for eight months. Just last week on Thursday, I put it on the market for sale. And on the same day, a buyer showed up and somebody else wants to rent at the same time. But I choose to sell it. I give glory to God because he was, me, he was with me in Goshen the whole time. Hallelujah. Now, I'm not reading these things randomly from all over the place. They are coming from the testimony of people who have come before God. And because they have come before God, God is going to bless them. And His name will be glorified because of their testimony. Hallelujah. Amen. This, as I say, is the nature of our God. Sometimes works in double, double. I don't know if there's such a song, but if there isn't, Tracy, we need to sing one like that. Hallelujah. We need to write a song like that that our God works in doubles and even more because our God is faithful. Hallelujah. It glorifies God. When we glorify God for the work that he has done in our life, it confirms, it confirms the gospel with supernatural evidence. Hallelujah. Now, another testimony. Praise report. Last week, we prayed for my sister-in-law, Joyce, who had been diagnosed with blood clots in her legs and was asked to return the next day to the hospital for a CT scan. She went to the hospital and after the scan, she was told there is nothing on the scan and the blood test came back negative. The x-ray is... Amen, amen. The x-ray is also clear. What the doctors found is a small burst of past vein which is treatable with painkillers. She is very grateful that you stood with her and prayed with her. We give glory to God for his miracle, Pastor Irene. Hallelujah. This is our God. This is our God. The word of God says, these are the signs that will accompany those who have believed in me. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up serpents and they will drink anything deadly, it will not hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will get well. So this year we have seen the sick being healed in this place. Hallelujah. This is the word of God being fulfilled in our lives here today. Another testimony. I want to thank the Lord for not giving up on me. For he led me to South Street Baptist Church. For hearing my prayers and giving me the strength to do what is best for me and my children. A special thank you to Josie who has been helping me grow in my faith. A testimony from Sharon. Hallelujah. God is transforming lives. He has transformed Sharon's life. And Sharon has come before him and said, glory be to our God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Another one. Tracy this time. Last week, I sold a gift into a friend's ministry. I had the means to give, but I still prayed for God to bless me in unexpected ways in return. And before the end of the week, I received an unexpected gift that was exceedingly more than what I sold. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. 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 Do not go get tired, do not get weary because we are going to glorify our God for what he has done. He has done great things in this place. Hallelujah. Thirdly, when we glorify our God, 
for what he has done, it confirms the defeat of the devil. When we share our testimony, we declare the enemy is a liar and declare his defeat again and again and again and again. Hallelujah. This is my favorite. This is the thing that I enjoy most about what our testimonies do before God. Now, some of you will remember in the month, at the beginning of the year, I was asking for prayers for my brother. My brother Chris, who grew up, and I was looking after him, he grew up from a very small boy when he was eight, who was under my custody, he was under my care, and as we grew up, I saw him become a mature young man. I went, left this place, went to attend his wedding, and I remember when I went there, his photographer dropped out, and I was his main photographer on that day. The way God works, he works miracles. And this brother, from the beginning of the year, January thereabouts to March, he had this, this, this disease, we could not tell what was happening. And his health was deteriorating, he was losing so much weight. The month of January, the month of February, by March, you could not recognize him. Yet in his home there was people coming in like every day they'll have like five or ten people and he'd wake up and go and spend time with them. And the more this disease ate away his body, the more he sought God, the more he came closer to God every single day. And I spoke to him quite regularly. And in the month of April, I remember the last few days of his life, I remember we sat there and we kept praying, we kept praying and when the churches were shutting down, I remember how angry we sat and we were angry and we were calling on God and saying, why are churches shutting down when we need to be glorifying God, we need to be seeking God at this time? And I remember on the last day, just before he died on the 12th, 11th night, I was looking at him in the eye and at this point, even his speech, he could not speak. You could only look at him in his eye and I could see that he was communicating something and he was frustrated because he could not speak back to me and his tears were rolling and I was saying can you try and eat some food because he couldn't eat at that point and as we finished our conversation I'm told that afterwards he ate quite a bit of food but a few hours into the night I think we spoke last around 11 and I think 2 a.m. thereabouts I was called my, by my sister who said our brother has passed on and at that point, I was lost because I was thinking, God, you, you know, I've believed you for a miracle for this young man. And I know that you are going to use him greatly, yet I do not understand what is going on here. He had cancer, cancer of the liver. He was not alcoholic. He never drank. He, was, he had hepatitis B. And somehow, for some reason, all the years he had lived, he had it from the time he was born, but all the years he had lived, it had no impact until this point in time. And when I looked at him and seeing his situation and the pain he was going through, I knew only God could save him, but yet he did not wake up from, from his death. So I know that God was at work at that time. My heart was broken in the natural, but when I sought God, he encouraged him, he gave me a lot of strength. And I know that even as we come to this point in the year, and I know some of you have experienced probably similar things you've experienced difficulty throughout the year. Because it's not been all celebration. We've had pain throughout the year as well. But we need to remember our God is faithful. There is one who has this physical body, but he cannot hurt your spirit. Hallelujah. Because God has created us for greater things. Let me just read for you. This scripture that I found encouraged me and I pray that it encourages any one of you who's going through any kind of pain of losing a loved one. It comes from Revelation 21 verse 1 to 7. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. And for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, they had vanished, and there is no longer any sea. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, arrayed like a bride adorned for her husband. And then I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the tabernacle of God is among men, and he will live among them, and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them as their God. 
and he will wipe away every tear from the eyes and there will no longer be death there will be no longer sorrow and anguish nor crying nor pain for the former order of things has passed away and he who sits on the throne said behold i'm making all things new hallelujah you remember that prophecy lord last week also he said write for these words right for these words are faithful and true they are accurate incorruptible and they are trustworthy and he said to me it is done i am the alpha and the omega the beginning and the end hallelujah so no matter any pain you have been through this year i want to remind you that that pain will not live forever hallelujah God is faithful to heal you on this earth and besides do not remember that the enemy will only harm your flesh but he will not harm your spirit if you continue to obey this God if you continue to trust in this God eternity is for you and the enemy has no power over you hallelujah God will dwell amongst his people and he will wipe away every tear that you have shed every pain that you have had every death that you have experienced every sorrow he will take away because the former order will pass away hallelujah i encourage you today be of good cheer because jesus won the battle on the cross it does not matter what you are going through today i know that our god is faithful and he is faithful and he is faithful your situation is only but temporary in the end of all these things i urge you persevere persevere in your faith persevere in your faith as I was running during the week, I felt some pain in my leg and I got to this crossroad where I would have done my run half or completed the run. And I thought, I'm gonna just take this half and go back home. But somehow when I got there, I just could not get myself to turn away. I just kept going with my normal run. And though I was moving slowly, I just kept going, kept going, and I finished my run. My brothers, my sisters, God has called us for a big run. And there is no quitting this run. You do not walk away from this battle. Indeed, the enemy might harm you this, at this point in time. But yes, our God is faithful to walk with you. As you go, you might move maybe slower than you normally do. And at some point, we will be raising you with our prayers because... You are in a place of pain, you are in a place of suffering. We are constantly praying for you. I know people who have been in a coma for over a year. We are still praying because we believe in a God of miracles, God of wonders who will heal them and bring them back to life. We are a church that is praying and faithfully praying for each one of you. And we want you to rise up to be in a place where you are praying as well because that is how we win this battle. Hallelujah. We will win this battle because we trust in God. Yeah. A couple more stories and now we will finish. A praise report again from Tanya. She says this, last week we prayed for my restriction to be removed by court in order to allow me to work. And God has heard our prayers. Not only were the restrictions removed, but I was granted more than I expected, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We have been praying for Tanya and God is a God of justice. A God of justice. A God who hears when we call upon his name. He has heard our prayers and we need to continue to call upon his name until every prayer that we are praying is answered. Hallelujah. When we glorify God for what he has done, it also releases the same anointing that flowed when the miracle was performed. And this releases people to experience the same miracle again. Hallelujah. Amen. Two more. Praise report. My friend's sister, Joanne, who we prayed for 
that was in India has finally left India and is now back home in Kampala, Uganda, continuing to get better. We prayed for a transplant. God worked in miraculous ways. So we want to glorify God because we were praying and we have seen the work of God here. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. So today we release that anointing that she received, we release that anointing for the sick to be healed in this place. Hallelujah. That when the sick walk through those doors into this place, they will be healed because our God is healing. Hallelujah. A week and a half after starting a new job, the country went into lockdown. We serve a faithful God and to him be all glory, honor, and praise. I have completed my six months probation successfully, and that was shared by Samantha. She's sitting here today. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Another one. My friend Daniel got the promotion we prayed for the other week. Thanks be to God. Amen. When we give our testimony, we declare that those, that those who have lost work in this place will have work again because of Jesus, because of Jesus, because he has worked for Samantha, he will work for you if you are here and you are looking for work. Our God is faithful. These are not just words. We have seen it happen in this place. Hallelujah. And Toby shared this, I thank God for significant unexpected income for my family. So we pray more income in this place for household, that there will be more and more into your households because of the faithfulness of our God. And again in September, I remember we had testimonies of our children getting selected into universities of their choices. God has been faithful, hallelujah. Oh, glory to our God. Amen. Tracy and Tim, please join me here. Hallelujah. Today, I just want us to spend some time glorifying our God. I want us to take time and glorify our God. For many, it's been a tough, tough time in the natural, but those who know God, those who believe in our God, have seen God at work in the supernatural and bringing things happening in the natural. And I remind you, we cannot act as if nothing has happened. Yes, things have happened. It's not business as usual in the natural, and therefore it cannot be business as usual in the supernatural. We need to be in a place where we glorify our God. Hallelujah. We keep praying for one another. And we cannot stop until this battle is won in the name of Jesus. I remind that just the fact that you are sitting here today is a testimony to God's miracle. Even if your income has not increased, this is a testimony of God's work in your life. As I say, we have seen people in a home, one lives, another one dies, nobody knows what is going on, nobody understands exactly what is going on, but our God is in control, and we cannot live as if nothing is happening, we cannot live as if life is business as usual, let's stand together. I want to finish with these words of a testimony of my sister Jessica here, which I think just sums up what I believe God has been doing in this church. She says this, I want to thank God for everything he has done this year. Despite it being a pandemic, he's been so faithful. And this box that I'm using to, to write what he has done, it's not big enough. It is not big enough to give thanks and glory to our God. 
whatever we do here today can never ever be enough to give thanks to God for what he has done for us. So we're going to sing together. And before we do that, I just want you to open your mouth and to start to thank God for what he has done in your life. If nothing at all, you are alive here today, glorify our God. Give him glory, give him glory. Raise your voice and just glorify our God and say thank you. Thank you that I'm alive today. Thank you that you have looked after my children. Thank you that I have a job today. Thank you that I have food on my table today. Thank you because you have been good to me, O God. Thank you because you have been faithful. Glory be to your holy name, Jesus. Glory be to your holy name, Jesus. We have seen your faithfulness here today. We have seen your faithfulness in this place today, O Father. We have seen your faithfulness, Lord Jesus. We glorify your name, O Father. We bless your name, Jesus. We declare that you are not our God, O Father. You are not our worthy Lord. You are not our mighty Lord. You have done it with your own hand. You have done it with your mighty arm, O Father. We bless your name today. We glorify your name today. We declare that you, God, have done it. You are Yahweh. You are Yahweh. The beginning and the end. You are Alpha and the Omega. You have done it for us, O Father. You have done it for us, O Father. We bless your name, Lord Jesus. We bless your name, Lord Jesus. You bless your name, Lord Jesus. We glorify your name, Lord Jesus. We will not stand here and watch the stones glorify your name. We will glorify your name because you have done it for us, O oh Father. Thank you for those who have received healing in this place, O oh Father. Thank you, Lord, for those whose income has increased significantly. Thank you for those, Lord God, O oh Father, whom you have given new jobs, O oh Father. Thank you, Lord, for those who went for schools, O oh Father, and have received, O oh Father, new university places, O oh Father. We bless your name, Lord Jesus. We bless your name, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for those wounds that you are healing today, O oh Father. Thank you, Lord, for those wounds that are broken, O oh Father. Lord, we bless your name and declare that you, O oh God, are faithful to see them through, O oh Father. You are faithful to win these battles, O oh God, because you are the great and mighty God, O oh Father. We exalt your glory in your holy name, O oh Father. We exalt your mighty name, Jesus, because you are faithful, God. You are worth the King of Kings. You are worth the King of Kings. There is nothing, nothing, nothing that we can ever bring before you, Lord God, to show how grateful, how grateful and thankful we are for what you have done for us, Lord. If no one in the world will thank you, Lord, we will be here to thank you day and night, day and night, day and night. We will bless your name, we will bless your name, we will bless your name, because you are our God, oh Father. You have done it for us, oh Father. We bless your name, Lord Jesus. You are the almighty God. You are the almighty God. And we thank you, Lord, that this is just the beginning. This is just the beginning, oh Father, of your greatness, oh Father. We are going to see miracles in this place, oh Father. The miracles we have seen is the beginning of your mighty work, oh Father. It's the beginning, oh Father, of greater things, oh Father, because you are faithful, oh God. Move, Father. Move in the spirit, Lord God. Glory be to your holy name, Lord Jesus. We bless your name, Lord Jesus. Lord, every heart that is broken here today, we present before you, Lord God. Jesus, this morning, Father, we come before you, Lord Jesus, to break and to dismantle every work of the enemy, Father, that holds your people down, oh Father, preventing them from seeing your faithfulness, oh Father. We dismantle his work here today in the name of Jesus. We establish your throne in this place and in your people's homes, oh Father, that you will reign, oh Father. The praises will rise up in their homes, Lord Jesus. The praises will rise up day and night, oh King of Kings, because you have been faithful, Father. Because you are a faithful God, oh Father. We bless your name, Jesus. Because you are not our God, oh Father. Glory be to your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let us sing together. Hallelujah. Thank you. 
and his offering. But when Cain and his offering, he did not look with favor. So Cain was very angry and his face was downcast. So we can see here that without faith, it is impossible to please God, as Granwell said earlier. And I know giving 10% of your income, it takes faith because you have to trust that when you give money, God is going to make up for it by providing for your every need. But I will encourage you, my brothers and sisters in Christ, to step out in faith like Abel did so that your giving will find favor in God's eyes. You will attract God's favor in your life. I just want to share with you a short story. There was this man who was struggling so much to pay, struggling to commit to a 10% offering each week. But he was always coming with what if. You know that what if? What if I can't pay the bill? What if the washing machine break down? What if I lose my job? He just couldn't commit to paying that 10% each week. But his pastor said to him, if I promise to make up the difference in your bills, if you should fall short, do you think you could try tithing for a month? And he thought about it and he said, you know what? Yes. And the pastor said to him, you are putting your trust in a mere man like me, but not your trust in your heavenly father who owns the entire universe. Psalm 24 verse 1 said, the earth is the Lord's and everything. So my brothers and sisters, giving off your tithes and offering is one of the keys to God's favor. So as we give now by faith and in obedience to the Lord, let me echo or let me paraphrase what Paul said to the Philippians uh, at the church in Philippi. Your tithes and offerings will be fragrant aroma and acceptable sacrifice well pleasing to God. Amen? Amen. 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 We encourage you to, to give online. Uh, the bank details will appear on the screen uh, or you can also use our giving link which is on our church website. It is safe and secure for you to do so. You can give a recurring, set up a recurring uh, transaction or you can make a one-off payment. Uh, if you are watching us via our YouTube channel later, you can give, you can use the description box and you can give using the, using the, the link below in the description box. Or if you're here in the sanctuary with us, the basket will be at the front for you to come forward. So let's stand as we worship our Lord and give him what's due to his holy name. Amen. Amen. Amen.
us pray and give thanks to God for what he has first given to us. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you so much for your blessings. We thank you that we can give to you freely, not under any pressure or compulsion, Lord. But thank you that we can give to you freely. Father, I pray that you will bless the hands of those who have given to us this morning. And Father, as we come and we give to you, Lord, I pray, oh God, that this gift that you have given to us, it will be multiplied just as we did with the miracle of the five loaves and the two fishes. Father, multiply these gifts, oh God. Father, we ask that for everyone that has given this morning, oh Lord, they will be blessed. Father, we ask that you will bless them to overflowing, oh God. Father, there will be increase in their homes. Father, you will open doors that need to be opened. You will close doors that need to be closed, oh God. Father, they will come and give you the glory and tell us of the wonderful works that you are doing in their lives. Father, we just want to pray for those who are not able to give. And Father, we pray especially as well for those who are seeking jobs, for those who are going for interviews this week, oh God, we ask that you will take away all fear and anxiousness, oh God, that when they sit in that interview, Lord, room, Lord, you will speak through them, that they will answer the questions, Lord, in the way that you want them to answer the questions, Lord, you will provide. Father, we just want to say thank you so much for your many blessings. We thank you. We haven't got lips to thank you. Father, we have seen your faithfulness right throughout the year, even through a pandemic. And we give you glory. So, Father, these gifts that have come to you, we ask that it will be used for the honor and glory of your name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Now before you go, let me just say a blessing to you, over you before you go. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. See you again next week, or hop at 7 o'clock on Wednesday and 10.30 p.m. God bless you and have a blessed week.